everybody, my name is Tanya and this is the Valentine's Day book tag. So this tag was created by the lovely Jo at Jo Reads Books and I was tagged by Jo herself. I'm currently running very behind on the tags that I've been tagged in. There are a couple that I filmed that will hopefully be coming soon and there are some others that I'm hoping to film soon but I thought this one better jump the queue since it's a timely thing and it's already the 15th when I'm filming this. So the first question is your favourite couple ever, you want to have their relationship and I don't know whether I'd go so far as to say I want to have their relationship but Juliet Miller who is one of my favourite authors, you've heard me mention her a lot, writes some really good relationships, some really great male leads and one of my favourite relationships in her books is the one in her first book, Dot of the Forest. This is the first book in her Seven Waters series and the relationship between Sokka and Red in this one is just really nice. Based on the fairy tale of the Six Swans, this is the story of Sorka, the youngest child of Low Column, and due to a series of circumstances involving an evil stepmother and sorcery, she has to go on a quest to save the lives of her six brothers. And during that time, Sorka is bound to remain silent, so she cannot communicate with others and tell her story. While she's trying to fend for herself, and while she undertakes this quest, she falls into the hands of Red who's one of the enemy and is desperate for any information she may be able to provide about the fate of his brother. What I really like about this relationship is the way that Red comes to understand Sokka despite the fact that she can't verbally express what she's thinking, what she's feeling, he becomes attuned to her and they manage to communicate without that element of speech on her side. So he talks to her and maybe reveals a little bit more than he would if she was able to speak to him but that she's able to make herself known to him or even if she's not telling him what's wrong he's able to sense and to understand what's happening in her mind I think is really lovely. Question number two is a relationship that never happened. You wanted them to get together but they never did. And for this I've decided to talk about Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein. I've mentioned this in a couple of videos before. So this is a classic sci-fi book and it was setting up I thought to be uh, guy gets the girl and I was finding myself liking the guy in question. He's an unscrupulous journalist and you know maybe not the greatest of guys but I was liking the dynamic happening and kind of really rooting for him and then it took a shift and that's not where it went at all and I really wish they had got together because if it had followed that path that I was expecting maybe I would have continued to like the book and actually it would have been worth the five stars that the beginning was instead of the two to three stars that I ended up giving it. Question number three is your crush and while I don't know that I exactly have fictional crushes this is somebody that I've talked about before and is the person that finally usurped Red is probably my favourite Julian Riley guy and that is Phelan from the Bridget Chronicles. This is the third book, The Well of Shades, and it's the one that we see the most of him, although he's a very big part of book two as well. And I really do love Phelan. He is just such a great complex character. When we were first introduced to him in book one, he is an emotionless bodyguard assassin, no history, no weaknesses, and of course as you'd expect with pretty much anybody, that's not exactly the whole truth and so as the time goes on and the series goes on we get more of his backstory and it's just wonderful and his character development is so good and this book in particular where we really kind of get the full picture of his past is good guys, it's really good. Question number four is the worst relationship, so a relationship you really want to break up because the character was awful or deceitful or abusive or whatever and for this one I've decided to go with Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Now I'm fairly certain that most of us have got a an idea of the plot of Wuthering Heights but I might get into slightly spoilerish territory so if you don't want to hear anything about that um, mute me until the book goes down. So there are a lot of hateful characters in this book and there wasn't necessarily a relationship that I was rooting for either because all of the options were horrible but the relationship that I'm choosing for this is when Kathy married Edgar and I know that that was the socially acceptable thing to do and that she didn't really have all that much choice in the matter but Edgar Linton <laughs> I didn't want her necessarily to end up with Heathcliff either because, you know, he's not a great choice. But Edgar Linton was so whiny and irritating that just, I really didn't enjoy that relationship at all. Question number five is your favourite love triangle. And I actually did the Top 5 Wednesday topic for this back last year in the month that I did do all the Top 5 Wednesday topics and then have kind of petered out. And I mean to get back into them but it just hasn't quite happened. But anyway, 
I did do that video and I tried to choose ones that were kind of outside the square and different kind of love triangles. So I'll leave a link to that one down below if you are interested. I didn't want to choose any of the love triangles that I talked about in that. So I've gone for another very much offbeat thinking outside the square one. And this is something that is a love triangle but kind of isn't but kind of is. And that is uh, the love triangle in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The love triangle-ish between Arthur, our main character, Tulian and Zephyr Beeblebrox. So the backstory behind this one was uh, Tulian was the hot girl at the party that Arthur was trying to chat up one night. And so Arthur's, you know, struggling along trying to make headway talking to Tulian and Zephyr Beeblebrox arrives. And Zephod says to Trillian, hey, is this guy annoying you? Why don't you talk to me? I'm from a different planet. And the interesting thing is, he did actually turn out to be from another planet. He does literally have two heads. It wasn't just his costume for the Fed's dress party they're attending. And so um, Trillian's whisked away and Arthur doesn't see her again until, improbably enough, they paths cross once again. And question number six is your favourite tragic love story. So like Romeo and Juliet and without spoilers tell about a couple whose romance was uh, tragically cut short. And again I've decided to go with something quite different for this one because a couple of the tragic ones that I know even without spoilers showing the book was going to be a little bit too obvious. So I've gone for something a little bit offbeat with this one and that is Lost in a Good Book by Jasper Ford. This is the second book in the Thursday Next series and yeah, there's a tragic love story in this. There's a relationship that's cut short. The premise of this is that in the first book, Thursday Next has gained the ire of Goliath, which is a big um, mega corporation, not unlike Amazon, that is kind of taking over the world. And so to get back at her, they've actually gone back in time and they've eradicated her husband. And so they've only been married for a month when suddenly her husband disappears and she's the only one who remembers him. Because now they've changed the past so that her husband actually died 37 years ago. And so the story is very much, will she ever manage to get him back again? And finally the bonus question of what book would you choose to be your valentine? And for this I have gone with something that makes me smile and it's just so lovely. And that is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. This is just one of those feel good books that just makes me smile when I think about it. And it's just lovely and I really need to reread it and would highly, highly recommend it. So those are my picks for the Valentine's Day book tag. I'm not going to tag anybody because I am already behind on this, doing it on the 15th. And Joe tagged an amazing list of wonderful people. But if you do want to do this tag, absolutely, I tag you. And let me know down in the comments so I can check out your video. As always, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!